Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna go over five common health foods that I don't personally purchase as a nutritional therapist practitioner and why I don't buy them. For those of you who haven't met me yet, my name is Alyssa Paul. I am certified in holistic nutrition and I specifically work with women in balancing hormones as well as dealing with infertility and prenatal, postnatal, all those good stuff that we as women get to deal with. <laughs> the first food that I don't buy is protein bars and here's why. Usually with protein bars, even like the healthy ones, there usually isn't a very good quality source of protein. And there's usually a lot of sweetener in it, even if it's a natural sweetener like honey, maple syrup, coconut sugar, um, or even dates. It's going to be a lot of sugar and it's going to cause an insulin spike, which is going to cause a crash and then lead to cravings and mood swings and cause you to want to binge later on. Protein bars also lack a lot of fiber in them, and fiber is one of the things that's going to help you feel full and satiated. If you're in like an absolute pinch, it's probably better to have something rather than nothing, but personally, I just try to be prepared with other whole food snacks in my purse or diaper bag since I'm a mom. <laughs> I prefer snacks like a handful of nuts, a bowl of whole milk Greek yogurt with some raspberries on top. Things you really want to focus on if you're trying to keep blood sugar levels stable is to eat balanced meals that are packed full of protein, fat, and fiber. And a protein bar is just not going to meet those qualifications well enough to warrant me buying them. The second food that I don't buy would be fruit juices and or green juices. Now these are super popular nowadays, especially the green juices. I think they've been pushed as like, you drink these green juices and it does wonders for your skin and your gut and all these things. They're loaded with sugar. The best way to consume fruit or vegetables is in their whole form because the fiber is actually going to slow down the release of sugar. When you juice something, even if it's a vegetable like a carrot, it's going to be much higher in sugar content because you're going to be missing all that fiber. This is going to cause a very high insulin spike. It's pretty much like drinking sugar water. Especially if you are trying to balance your hormones or balance your blood sugar, if you are aiming for any sort of weight loss goal, this is something you should definitely steer away from as it's only going to work against your goals. A better alternative would be to blend it up into a smoothie and to also try to incorporate some lower sugar fruits like berries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and then you also won't be missing out on all that great fiber that's going to slow down the release of that sugar in your body. Okay, the third health food that I don't buy would be pre-mixed and pre-made salad dressings. I think every time I'm in a store and I'm like, ooh, that looks yummy, and I pick it up and I look at the back, it's usually made with some sort of like hydrogenated oil, canola oil, or it has a little bit of olive oil in it, but then it's like got other things in it like sugar or just like nasty ingredients that I don't want to eat. And I always end up putting it back and think, ugh, I guess I'm just gonna keep making my own. There are some good brands out there. I think Primal Kitchen is pretty clean, but they're also like super expensive and then you're just better off making your own. We use olive oil and vinegar in our house and we love it. Like we'll switch up the vinegar. Sometimes it'll be, you know, a really nice fig vinegar or balsamic vinegar or red wine vinegar. The options honestly can be tailored to your specific taste buds. Occasionally I'll make my own Italian dressing at home by mixing in some spices and fresh garlic and lemon juice. It's just way more affordable and way healthier to just make them ourselves. So that's why I don't buy pre-mixed salad dressings. Okay, the fourth food that I don't buy, and this is probably going to make some people upset, is I don't buy coffee creamer. We don't drink coffee habitually. Like we're not, I wouldn't say we're a coffee drinkers. I personally don't care for the taste of coffee. There, I just like lost a bunch of people. I drink it occasionally because I'm a mom and there are nights I don't sleep good. Um, I'm also like a light sleeper and my husband snores so... <laughs> so on the occasions that I do drink coffee, I will usually stick to an option like coconut cream, which is basically the, the solidified contents of a can of full fat coconut milk. Oh, it's so good. I use this in my smoothies, like we use this in everything. It's so delicious. It's a staple in our house for sure. 
So I'll either use something like that or some other options that I'd recommend if you're like not into the coconut products would be to use heavy cream or half and half. I also don't add any sweetener to my coffee and a lot of the coffee creamers out there have sweeteners in them. I personally try to keep my blood levels very stable so that I can have a very nice sustained energy. So for me personally, I choose to just go the coconut cream or I'd also recommend heavy cream or half and half to put into your coffee instead of buying coffee creamer. You're going to spend way too much money on something that's just marketed to be healthy when you can get really good quality stuff for so much less. I'm not saying that if you've found a coffee creamer that is very clean, it doesn't have any sugar in it. Like I think there's like those like nut pods out there. I'm not saying don't get it. But even financially, I think you'd be way better off finding a different alternative than buying these like little pre-made coffee creamers when you can just make your own. Okay, the fifth item that I do not buy is pre-made like cake mixes, brownie mixes, like things like that. I can't tolerate gluten, my husband can't tolerate gluten, so we're a gluten-free home. All the gluten-free things are automatically more expensive, but especially when you buy a pre-made like gluten-free cake mix. For one, it almost always has sugar in it. It usually uses um, ingredients like brown rice and white rice flour, which are super processed. And I guess the argument could be made that if you're going to be eating a brownie or a piece of cake, you're not exactly going to be worried about your insulin levels. It's going to be a treat and I am totally for having those moments where you indulge in something you enjoy, all in moderation, of course. But my preference would be to not spend the money even on those like super healthy ones that really are truly full of great ingredients. But honestly, it's like $8 a box and it makes like six muffins or 12 brownies. I like my treats too, so I personally just choose to make all of these items instead of buying pre-mixed packages that are usually full of less than stellar ingredients. If any of this video was at all interesting to you or you enjoyed it or it got you thinking about some things that perhaps you buy that maybe you would like to stop buying or just inspired you in some way to just be more mindful of the things you're purchasing, please go ahead and let me know by hitting that like button and that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. I'm trying to get this channel off the ground and all of those likes and subscribes matter. So you guys are the best. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. It means a lot to me. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.